Few rivers in the world can match the relentless power of West Virginia's new river. Now, in an unprecedented adventure, a group of the world's best personal watercraft riders will attempt to conquer these untamed rapids. Facing huge submerged boulders, unpredictable currents, and giant whitewater, they will attempt to become the first to make this wild river journey. Personal watercraft riding is the fastest growing water sport in America today. Its surge in popularity as a recreational sport has given rise to a racing circuit, which culminates each year at the Mecca for jet ski riding, Lake Havasu, Arizona. Each third weekend in October, 50,000 fans make the pilgrimage to this desert oasis to watch the fastest jet skiers on earth compete for the world title. Now, three of these riders who have dominated the racing circuit are teaming up for a unique new adventure on these machines. An adventure where the payoff will not be a checkered flag, but survival. Victor Sheldon has been riding professionally since 1988 and is a two-time pro men's national champion. His teammate, Christy Carlson, has dominated women competitors, winning four straight world championships. Only 22, she is the most feared competitor on the women's jet skiing circuit. New to the tour, but already ranked near the top, is Vanilla Ice. Ice, who achieved stardom in the pop music world, is now scoring hits as a pro rider. Acknowledged daredevils, these top three riders have pioneered this young sport by pushing themselves and their skis to new limits. Now they will test the boundaries of those limits with their biggest challenge yet, whitewater rapids. The domain of the rafter and kayaker, rapids have been considered too dangerous for personal watercraft to even attempt. But despite the danger, these riders are determined to be the first. Their target? The New River, chosen by the riders because of its reputation as one of the top whitewater rivers in the country. Located in the mountains of southern West Virginia, the New was once the center of a huge coal mining region, now replaced by a booming recreational and tourist industry. The New, made a national park in 1978, is believed to be the second oldest river on Earth a 65 million year old waterway that predates the Appalachian Mountains through which it winds. The jet ski expedition will begin its journey downriver in the heart of the West Virginia backwoods, two hours south of Charleston. Across country roads, the mobile contingent heads for the launch site with the riders and their support. Two mechanics, four new personal watercraft, and the six-person film crew that will document the expedition. I think you ought to think realistically. Let you realistically. Think that water. It's in the side. It's in. <laughs> Look at this. Far from the intense pressure to win on a grueling race tour, the rider's success here will depend on teamwork. Rivers, an experienced local rafting company, has been hired to guide the skiers through the treacherous waters. The guides will provide five inflatable rafts to transport the supplies and personnel that will back the expedition. All equipment, including gas, food, and spare parts for the skis, must be ferried on the rafts. How are we going to get these jet skis down here? There are no roads or aerial access once they enter the steep confines of the gorge. Okay, ready, Mike? One, two, three. Victor and Christy will ride 750cc stand-up jet skis. Ice will be on a sit-down model. 
Other than some minor modifications, these are basically the same stock machines sold to the public. Swing him around. The riders will rely heavily on several safety and rescue kayakers who will be in the water at all times. The worst thing you can do out here, though, guys, is panic. You let me take care of you. You let one of my guys take care of you. You let us do our job. That's what we're trained to do, and we'll get you out of it. No matter what it looks like at the time, we'll get you out of it. The riders will trust the guides to lead them down a 20-mile stretch of the most difficult rapids on the river. The journey will take four days, ending with their arrival at the base of the majestic New River Gorge Bridge. Their biggest challenge will come two days into the expedition at a narrow, rocky section nicknamed the Lower Keeney. To rafters, it's known as a Class 5, the largest and most dangerous rapids on a river responsible for numerous drownings. At the launch point, Christy, Victor, and Ice prepare and warm up the skis. Okay, are we ready to roll? Uh, These watercraft were not designed for rapids, and the riders are equally unfamiliar with this foreign environment. I've never experienced anything like this, you know. Um, closest I get is out in the ocean, but it's nothing like having water just flowing at a constant flow and then trying to ride up it. It's way more dangerous, you know, because you have the rocks underneath and on the sides as well, and they can just slam you into a rock if you mess up. As in traditional whitewater rafting, the riders will maneuver downstream first. Once safely down the rapids, the jet skiers will then reverse direction and go back up through the white water, relying on the power of the skis and their riding skill to conquer the river, one rapid at a time. Soon after entering the water, they reach their first obstacle, the upper railroad rapids and a five-foot waterfall with only one way down. Using raw horsepower, Vic proves the waterfall is jumpable, leading the way for Christy on her first attempt. The stand-ups, powered by Vic and Christy, flew over the waterfall, but Ice is worried. If his larger sit-down machine is too heavy to jump, the result would be a serious crash. First time I looked down the rapids, I was like, oh no, what did I get myself into? <laughs> I'm looking at these rocks and I'm looking at this water and I'm looking at the force that it's, you know, pushed these rocks. God, the white water coming up from underneath. You don't know how, which path to take. If you mess up just the slightest, you're gone, just like that. Undertow, just take you out, flip your ski up, crack your fiberglass, and, you know, that, and hopefully it won't do anything to you, but you could end up in the morgue. After a rocky start, ice is unhurt. The ski's fiberglass hull has also survived, despite deep gouges that will need patching. Man, this trim switch right here was trimmed down, which makes the front of the ski go down. And I guess I just forgot to look at it, or Victor was over here messing with it. And it should have been up. It makes the nose come up. So I hit the rock with the front end, and it just, boom, you saw it. Although this is only a class three rapid in terms of difficulty, the riders, led by Vic, are quickly learning maneuvers that will help them face the class five rapids to come. We ride in a lot of uh, flat water, rivers, and the ocean and stuff. 
And in the rapids, it's like a whole other element. You know, it's kind of like you're flowing with the river. It's kind of good that we're starting off small and, and, and uh, working our way to the hard stuff. You know, we get we get to get uh, a little bit more in tune with it and everything. Um, so, I mean, I, I like jumping stuff, and I can't wait to jump bigger and better and part gnarlier and um, more extreme stuff. Christy, up next, and the rest of the riders depend on the safety kayaker's experience for the best path or line through the rapids. Without the kayaker's advice, the riders would be riding blind through a partially submerged obstacle course of bone-crushing rocks. The first time I went through the rapids, it was an anxious feeling that I experienced because I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what I would hit. I didn't know... If I would pick the proper lines because things happen really fast. I bumped a couple rocks and I'm getting a feel for what to look for as far as lines are concerned. They're educating us quickly on what to avoid. <laughs> and uh, I learned a couple things the hard way, but um, once you get it down, it's pretty smooth and it's fun. With two riders safely up, ice will make the last run of the day. Once again, the maneuverability of the sit-down ski will be tested in the shallow, rocky rapids. With Ice's run, the team gets its first taste of victory, but the true tests lie downstream. Now late afternoon, the riders and crew select a campsite for the night. Like a dedicated pit crew, the mechanics have a busy evening ahead, replacing the fiberglass gashed on protruding river rocks. Uh, some town up here. Town? Some town up here. Town. Yeah, some ghost town. Watch out, rock coming down. For the riders, it's a chance to explore the mysteries hidden beneath the thickly forested banks of this historic river gorge. It's the old spot of... Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes. This is uh, the old town of Caperton. Uh, it used to be one of the old coal mining communities. Uh, anywhere from late 1800s to about 1950. And this is the old jail here. and. Part of the jail, uh, right next door to the jail, was uh, the company store where most of the miners got the little bit of things they needed. Of course, it's very, very dangerous. You can see that's just barely standing there still yet. And uh, they try to leave it as natural as possible. As night begins to fall, the riders return to camp, nervously awaiting the larger rapids they will face tomorrow. Day two on the river and the riders have stopped to scout the next huge rapid they will face. Here, the gorge has narrowed, magnifying the power and speed of the churning water. A class four rapid, the Middle Keeney, is strewn with partially submerged boulders and hidden drop-offs. Like the river guides, the riders must quickly learn to read the river by observing horizon lines and subtle differences in water color. But controlling the ski and avoiding collisions in the fast water will be tough even for the best riders in the world. I would never recommend any average recreational rider to try something like this. Professionals such as Victor make it look easy. And it isn't though. It's deceiving. It's very dangerous. People get killed in these rapids. And the safety crew em couldn't emphasize enough that we respect Mother Nature because she will take control. With the same fluid style he used to become a national champion racer, Victor is the first watercraft rider to run down the middle Keeney. But as district ranger Lizzie Watts points out, the return trip may not be so easy. Five foot three, 120 pound Christy Carlson is next. As one of the best women racers in the world, it is her ocean riding experience that is most helpful to her in the rapids. One of my most fun things to do on the ski is ride in the surf. And the surf can be real treacherous as well. If you get caught in a barrel or you have to ride it properly or it will take you out. Once again, you have to respect Mother Nature. And I have quite a bit of experience in the surf, so some of the feelings of the currents and the waves with the barrel 
I was familiar with, and that helped quite a bit for me to get through this situation. ICE's strategy with the Rapids, as well as with racing, is the same. Full throttle and no fear. It's hard to go a little bit faster than the uh, current because the current is already going fast. I mean, it's going 30 miles an hour and you got to ski to do 40 miles an hour, you know? So you got to pretty much be wide open coming down and up. You got to be real quick. You got to judge real quick and you got to be smart and you got to keep focused and, and pray. <laughs> now that all the riders have safely descended the rapids, Victor's task is to find a way back up through the powerful wall of water. Halfway through the heart of the run, a misguided jump sends Victor scrambling to regain control. Stalled and caught in the current, he rams a submerged boulder that separates rider from ski. Learn to respect rapids, for sure, because, I mean, I got thrown down a couple times and the water's running really fast. It's like if you make one mistake or if you get caught underneath the rock, you know, you're, you're, you could get seriously injured. And, you know, we don't want to do that by no means. So you really want to just learn to really respect the river. Victor is okay. And while the kayakers track down his errant ski, Christy and Ice now attempt to conquer what seems to be an insurmountable barrier of whitewater. The churning, aerated whitewater has rendered the ski powerless. Sucking more air than water, the drive pumps cavitate, causing the ski to act as if it was stuck in neutral. Stalled out, all Christie can do is try again. I was full throttle, and, the, and the, po the power of the water was stronger than the power of the ski, and just sucked me under. It was gnarly. I didn't know if I was going to be postage stamped on a rock or what <laughs> and uh, spit me out and they told me hey I picked a bad line well obviously Ice is also stopped cold by the surging waters. But Victor and the other riders have learned a valuable lesson. Avoid the frothy white water that stalls the ski and seek out the deeper, greener water for maximum power. My second run, you know, I just, I just bonsai up it. The first run, I just kind of scoped it out, made a couple little slow, you know, maneuvers. And then the second run, you know, I just, it was just like clockwork, you know, just like jump here, jump there, and it was up, you know, within a few seconds. Following Victor's lead, Ice will try again to shoot up the rapids. I kind of actually bumped up against the rock, banked off the rock, and then kind of just wide open. I mean, every bit of power that ski had was just barely moving. I mean, just barely moving going up. That's how fast the water's rolling. And I got up to the edge in the top, and I was like, yeah, got it. It's cool. Totally cool. What a rush. I learned and figured out the best place to go is behind the rocks because there's more still water rather than where the strongest current flow is and picked a better line and scooted on up there and it was scary. It was thrilling, but when I got to the top, it was a total victory. <laughs> Night on the river is a busy time for the 25-member expedition. Nearly halfway through the journey, they are optimistic, despite the prospect of facing even larger and faster rapids. 
not allowed. I feel like we're doing a commercial. Well, fellas, you know, it doesn't get any better. Better than this. <laughs> 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 I guess in a while there's going to be some giant rats. To go really? Up. Yeah. They said we might get down and they doubt if we'll make it back up. Yeah, which is kind of a challenge. Yeah, it's a big no challenge. Way. <laughs> The biggest challenge for the mechanics will be patching the fiberglass on the damaged hulls by morning. These brand new watercraft have already endured a lifetime's worth of abuse, but technological improvements in recent years have made them not only fast, but extremely reliable. Almost a novelty when they were first introduced in the United States in the early 1970s. The production of personal watercraft is now big business. At this state-of-the-art assembly plant in Lincoln, Nebraska, close to 900 employees produce thousands of jet skis that are distributed to more than 1,200 independent dealers across the United States. Constructed of fiberglass hulls, the watercraft house two-stroke motors, which vary in size from 550 to 750 cc's. The motors run a pump that forces water through an impeller, giving the skis their thrust. Although the basic design is the same as the skis produced in the early 70s, improvements in electronic ignitions, bilge pumps, and fuel systems have made them as reliable as the family car. And like the family car, owning a personal watercraft is fast becoming a part of the American dream. Morning on the New River Gorge. The constant roar of the rapids is an early morning wake-up call for riders and crew. After breakfast, Victor leads a team downriver to survey the most dangerous rapids of the journey. The Class 5 Lower Keeney will offer the riders an ominous choice. Attack the middle and its furious flow, or venture to the outer pools and stair-step through a hull-busting rock garden. I was starting to look at it and it looks like maybe the easiest way is to, to where all the little pools are, try to hit all the little pools. So if I can start out here, jump over that rock, sit in that pool for a minute and get a drive coming up to here, sit in here for a minute and just kind of weave my way through here. Right here, if he's going to try to do the stand-up coming through here, he's got to remember that all the water here is flowing into basically what you might call, well, what it is called, the meat grinder. All this water, if he gets separated from his bike or he gets flipped over, he's going right over in this stuff here. He can get broached on a rock, he can drown. So it's very, it's a, it's a lot more dangerous here, him trying to stair step, than him going over there trying to get up through the main line. Although very dangerous, a trip through the meat grinder may be the only way for Victor and the other riders to continue their Wild River journey. Uncertain whether to continue their journey, the team will get some help from support rider Chris Gann who has volunteered to test run the lower Keeney. As Chris films his run with a helmet-mounted camera, the riders hope to watch his line and learn if it is safely possible to challenge these rapids. But if deemed too dangerous by the safety crew and National Park Service, the expedition could end right here.
Torn from his ski early on, Chris, a top rider, is okay, thanks to the quick work of the safety crew. The team must now decide if going on is worth the risk. This one here is really dangerous because there's a lot of submerged rocks and if you get away from your ski a little bit and if you get in front of the ski um, and the thing comes down you, it's just going to plow you into a rock. You know, there's a lot of rocks and stuff underneath there that just got holes in them. You get stuck underneath one of those things and, you know, you, you might have a hard, a real hard time getting out. So the danger factor is pretty, pretty dangerous. Despite the hazards, watching Chris's run has convinced the riders to push on. The key will be going down at full throttle avoiding the hidden ledge that knocked Chris off his ski. Victor will be the first to test the technique. Full throttle and almost out of control, he has avoided the ledge and made it down safely. But the real test, going back up, offers Victor a precarious choice. To his right, in the main line of the rapids, he faces the juicer rock, or to his left, a brutal garden of stone known as the meat grinder. Always dangerous, the meat grinder was recently responsible for a tragic river death. My first run up the Lower Keeney, I kind of came in the middle, looked at the middle for a while, then shoot it over to the left side, um, looked at it, kind of jumped up into a little pool and, and just sat there for a minute and trying to check things out. The position of the ski had to be three or four inches this way or four inches that way to be able to make it up these little mouths because they were like little waterfalls and they're probably about eight, nine inches wide. You kind of got to feel like a salmon running upstream. You know, I mean, it's like, it's like you got to jump over this ledge to get to this next ledge, to jump over that ledge to get into this pool. Only a few feet from the top, Victor's run is halted by a mad scramble across the river. Ice's sit-down ski has broken loose from its mooring upstream, and should it flip over in the rapids, it could possibly sink. Quickly moving into position, the safety kayakers corral the ski but now ice will have to climb the rapid without the benefit of riding down first. Having mapped a route through the meat grinder on his first try, Victor's second attempt goes like clockwork. He is the first ever to do what locals said couldn't be done. The question now is whether the diminutive but courageous Christy Carlson is up to the challenge. When he got to the top, I said, Victor, what do you think? Should I do this? Because we practice together for racing, and he knows my capabilities. And Victor said, I think you can do it. You can do it. Christy is my teammate, and she kind of looks up to me and, and asks me, hey, you think I'm able to do this? Christy, she really gives it 100%. The day we got here, they were talking about Keeney's bikinis, you know, that no one has ever done it, the dangers of them. We're scared you're going to get hurt, and we don't know if you can do it. And I'm just like, wow, you know, it's probably going to be pretty gnarly. But there's no way in the world I'm going to be here and see uh, this whole opportunity and not go. It's do or die. Like Victor, Christy rides down safely, barely in control. Now the meat grinder of the lower Keeney looms ahead, but one mistake could be fatal. Just short of victory, Christie buries the nose of the ski with nearly tragic results.
thousands of pounds of water coming over the top of me and there was no way out. And I was going down for a ride. I made a U-turn and just put my feet out in front of me and hoped for the best. But the safety crew was on it immediately. They were there. They rescued me, my boat. And uh, I waited a couple minutes to get a breath of air and went for it again. The feeling of victory, going over the top of that rapid section, it equals the last championship that I won. It was survival. It was incredible. With the larger, heavier sit-down craft, ICE will have to avoid the shallow meat grinder and attempt to power up the main line of the rapids. <laughs> I didn't want to go at all. And then Vic goes up over there on the easy side where he can hop, you know, on the, the stand-up. And I'm over there on the sit-down going, oh, no, he made it. Now i got to go and try it. <laughs> I just knew I was going to wreck. And I made it. And it, it was the, the best rush when I got at the top. I was just like, yeah, cool, man. You know, I made it. Bottom line is, we did awesome. it. We went down it. We went back <laughs> up it. So, right on. Down there. With the lower Keeney behind them, the group will make the long journey downstream to the next set of rapids, and their ultimate goal, the New River Gorge Bridge. High above the river at the Canyon Rim Visitor Center, the riders take a day off to enjoy some of the beauty and history of the area. Here, they are joined by another rider, John Stevens, who has made the long trip to West Virginia from his home in Florida. Because of their early success on the river, the riders were anxious to invite John, the current world champion on sit-down watercraft. At 28 years of age, Stevens has raced motocross, hydroplanes, and sailboats before his current domination of the personal watercraft tour. But like the other riders, it will be his first experience in the rapids. The impressive collection of still photos at the visitor center depicts river life at the turn of the century. The New River Gorge was largely inaccessible until 1873, when the completion of the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad opened the gorge to loggers and coal miners. The lure of employment drew hordes of people to the gorge, not only to dig coal, but to provide goods and services, as well as medical facilities. Booming coal towns sprang up overnight along the steep banks of the gorge, where white-hot ovens turned the raw coal into clean, burning coke. Often rowdy and lawless in their heyday, the old coal towns like Thurmond were abandoned when the mines played out. Today, the boarded-up main street of Thurmond still stands, but most of the legacy of the coal era has been reclaimed by the lush West Virginia forest whose beauty now beckons a new generation. Because of its spectacular beauty, the New River is one of the most popular whitewater rafting spots in the eastern United States. The river and its tributaries attract thousands of tourists to West Virginia, invigorating the local economy. The annual Gawley Festival begins at the nearby Summersville Dam, where long lines of rafters wait to be launched with the help of spillway-released whitewater. For the riders, it is a final opportunity to relax and enjoy this unique area before continuing their Wild River journey.
Although battered and bruised by numerous spills in the rapids, the rider's day off has rejuvenated them for the last leg of the expedition. Now joined by world champion sit-down rider John Stevens, the group will face two more sets of rapids, hoping to become the first and perhaps only watercraft riders to successfully run this mighty river. The logistics of moving the camera crew downriver has been almost as complicated and dangerous as moving the riders. The hundreds of pounds of video and film equipment has been ferried through the rapids, lashed onto the rafts. At each shooting location, cameramen are precariously positioned on nearby rocks and in the water with the jet skiers. The rider's perspective of the rapids has been captured by point-of-view cameras mounted by rider and cameraman Phil Johnson. With a helmet-mounted camera on his own head, Phil has taken many of the same risks as the riders. Accomplished riders in their own right, Phil Johnson and Chris Gann have been responsible for molding many young personal watercraft riders into the professional racers of tomorrow. Traveling by a tiny harbor just north of San Diego, California, drivers on the nearby Interstate 5 are often treated to glimpses of some of the best watercraft riding in the world. At this jet ski school, Professional riders pass on knowledge to a wide variety of students who learn everything from racing to basic riding. And a little bit more power. We have a lot of people who come to this, this school, believe it or not, for vacation. We've had some families we schedule private schools for, and they come just to enjoy the water, enjoy the watercraft, and really learn a, a new hobby. And here, if you're doing it, the elbows are looking good, and the knees are bent. We need to see that all the time. Okay? But the school is more than just riding jet skis. Chris Gann and his wife Jill, also a pro rider, use classroom type lectures to develop the rider's skill and perhaps more importantly, self-confidence. It's always fun to see somebody who can't ride, who can't even really stand up on the first day of the school and then by the end of the week they're out there racing and uh, trying to get great solemn times and being competitive out on the race course, you know, even aggressive. In three days of intensive training, the riders learn how to master closed course racing and slalom runs. A lot of people take this really seriously and they consider it their training camp for the three seasons. We've had some world champions come out of our school and they have used this class as a stepping stone to a higher level. Racing through the buoys with champions like Victor Sheldon is a unique opportunity that may be the most attractive part of the school for many of the students. These guys are proven champions, okay? There's something a proven champion has that nobody can really learn from a textbook or learn from practice. They, they need to learn it by talking to the person and, and seeing that confidence level. It all goes back to self-confidence and believing you can do it. Back on the river, the four riders have now advanced to the set of rapids nicknamed Miller's Folly. One by one, they pick their way down through jagged rocks and snags that constantly threaten to knock the riders off their watercraft. With the other riders safely moored in an eddy at the foot of the rapids, all eyes turn to the newcomer, John Stevens. For John, it will be a memorable watercraft experience to add to an impressive and diversified resume. I can ride the stand-ups, the sport class, the runabouts. Um, I started on the hardest thing there is to ride, the stand-up machines. If you can master a stand-up, you can ride anything else down the line. 
Uh, probably some of the most technical riding I've ever done. It's, it's, you have to save you and the machine to get up through the rapid without knocking the bottom out of the boat. It's, 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 it's a ride of a lifetime. As John has quickly discovered, the tremendous water flow pushes the 75 horsepower motors to the limit. Inching along at full throttle, he is joined by Victor and Ice, who have swapped watercraft. Their ability to master any type of ski in such adverse conditions is an indication of the athletic prowess of the riders. Victor Sheldon's cross-training regimen is a vital part of his pre-race preparation. Being a stand-up rider takes a lot of conditioning, so you got to be um, really physically fit to, to power these things around. I'm a big-time believer in cross-training. I race motorcycles a little bit, you know, just as, a, as an amateur at local races. I'm doing a lot of mountain biking right now. Do a lot of uh, weight training, do some running. Good physical conditioning has allowed Christy to dominate the women's racing tour. But it is mental toughness that makes her one of the best riders in the world, regardless of gender. I've learned how to hang with the boys. And uh, sometimes it's, it's hard, you know, but it's so thrilling and so exciting, I, I couldn't have it any other way. Twenty miles from their launch point upriver, an exhausted team of watercraft riders has reached the threshold of the New River Gorge Bridge and the end of their journey. But their last hurdle is shallow and extremely rocky. A career-threatening injury is a gamble the riders must take if they are to achieve their goal of conquering the new river. I got a lot of confidence on my ski, and I was still scared. Um, as far as those undertoes, getting stuck underneath the water, I'm still alive and I'm still ticking, so I haven't broken any bones. A run through a narrow gauntlet of sharp, pointed rocks is Victor's final test. Totally exhausted, he is the first member of the team to have run the new river. Despite a watercraft battered by hundreds of collisions, Christie is poised to become the first woman in the world to complete the journey. Down safely, the return trip will be an uphill battle in the unpredictable currents. I veered left close to the finger rock that was <laughs> the water. I said I left my mark on the rocks. Well, my shins tell the story that the rocks left their mark on me, too. The feeling is overwhelming. Just to think that we've done something that no one else in this world has done. And I, I feel very fortunate to be a part of this whole adventure. Although late to join the expedition, John Stevens has quickly learned to respect this wild river, where just holding on to the jet ski has proven difficult, even for the best riders in the world. Almost knocked unconscious by the large sit-down, John escapes serious injury thanks to his protective helmet. Within minutes, he is back up, powering through his final obstacle before joining the other riders for celebration in the pool above the rapids. Here, in the shadow of the bridge that marks the end of the expedition, they will watch and wait for Vanilla Ice to complete the run. I've never been on a river in a raft or on a ski or anything. I've never witnessed anything like the rocks, the rapids or anything. As close as I've ever been to it was on TV. I'm, you know, I'm a city boy. I've been in the city my whole life, and I've never, ever really been out of it. It's an experience that I'm going to remember all my life, and it's going to stick with me all my life. I think it's, I think it's beautiful. Surviving his final run without a scratch, Ice joins the other riders in completing this unique adventure. 
In their quest to conquer the swift waters of the new river, no prizes were won, no records broken. For the riders and their crew, the rewards will be the lasting memories of their journey, a journey now engraved in the rich history of this wild river.